Hi everyone, welcome to this week's this review. And it feels like being back a couple of years where that was always my standard opening and I still use the same words. Uh, I'm gonna ask Andy to give me a quick thumbs up if you can hear the audio nicely. And with that, I'm going to start sharing my screen because this time I'm gonna start properly by going to the Makeover Monday website and just pointing everyone to where you find the data sets. So you find them on the website, makeovermonday.co.uk. You can type in slash data, you can go to data sets and you will see the table. Uh, the week is the calendar week. So don't be confused by that. It is of course only week two after the relaunch, but this is calendar week 36. There's a link to the data a link to Watch Me Viz, which Andy hosts on Mondays. So you can watch that live, you can watch it on demand. And there's a link to Viz Review, which is this session. And then of course, the source. So that's typically the Viz and or article that goes with it and the original data source. So you've got all the information that you will need um, to research what's going on, etc. Now, what I also want to point out in some shameless self-promotion is our book, because if you have any kind of lack of inspiration or you just want to read up on data viz best practices and you want to look at 300 different pictures of data visualizations, that's why we wrote this book. And it's, it's still very valid and useful today. And uh, it draws from the data, sorry, from the Maker Monday community with the pictures that we use. Okay. So without further ado, let's hit the Twitter timeline. We're looking at the, the tweets for this week. Now I've skipped the first one because it was for a different data set. And I'm just gonna pick, like I did last time, a bunch of different types of visualizations to look at. And <clears throat> while I do that, feel free to hit the chat with your comments and questions. I know that Andy is online, so he can maybe ask, answer some questions if I don't get to them, but also tell each other where you're dialing in from, uh, what you thought of the data set, maybe something you learned, uh, make, make use of this time to form connections. You're also more than welcome to share a link to your Twitter handle so you can follow each other if you're not following each other yet. So do that. Okay, here we have Jeremy Johnson. And uh, let me see if I can oop, we're gonna, we're gonna look at the picture here. Um, so marriage age is increasing was the was the topic this week. Now, if I'm not mistaken, let me actually go back uh, very briefly, just because I remember what um, what Andy what Andy posted. It is the average age of women at first marriage. So that would be my first comment. Marriage age is increasing. Is that across couples? Is that for women? What is it? Now, I haven't looked at the data set myself, but as the uninformed audience I am, this would be important um, context to include. If it is this general statement, then I'm going to make certain assumptions. Otherwise, you might want to clarify that. Now, there might have been data in the data set that has men as well, or that has average marriage age, uh, you know, across kind of couples, whatever that constellation is. Um, but make that clear. So on the left, we've got a box and whisker plots. Um, I have to say, I do like box and whisker plots but only if they have an explanation because most of your audience, most of the people who look at this will not understand 100% how to read them. They might know, yeah, there's a bit of a spread going on, there's an average, there's something in there. But if you ask anyone looking at this visualization, what's the top line, the bottom line, what are these whiskers, what's the box, the line in the middle, I would guess that 90% would not be able to give you a comprehensive correct answer, which is why I say anytime you use it, you have to explain how to read it or describe the different things that people see on the screen. Um, I know they're very popular in academic papers and they have certainly got a place in the world. I just think they need to be explained much more than other types of charts. So by how much is marriage aid increasing? Um, the question is answered, but it's not easy to see it from the visual. You definitely need the text, the median age for marriage increased by about two years, I would add to that between the time of this compared to this. So he's comparing 2006 to 2010, 
to 2015-2019, I would include that in the sentence. And then why? That's a great question. I would be really curious why that is happening. 56% of the variance in the age is explained by the log of population density. What is the log of population density? Um, and why use, is that a logarithmic scale? I don't know. I don't know what the log of population density is. So please explain. Um, I like the note at the bottom that it's not necessarily the best explanation for it. Um, and of course, there are many, many factors playing into it. What I do guess, based on the images I've seen throughout the week, <clears throat> is that in more densely populated areas, people tend to marry at a later age. Women have are, are, at a, a, you know, are older when they get married. Um, why that is, I don't know. I'm sure some people can tell us, probably some economists um, or maybe marriage experts. All right, let's move on to the next one. Um, I don't know if this is the right data. Okay, interesting, interesting. Okay, I've got stuff to say about this. Um, I'm just going to quickly check the comments. Okay, some people prefer late, larger data sets. Don't worry, there will be a variety over the weeks. So there will be small, large, um, round, square. Uh, okay, so this chart here is a great example of something that I would say is work in progress. Uh, it says median age by state and time frame. Median age of what? Of who? Animals, humans, trees, it needs a proper title. This shows you how important it is that you have a title because this could literally be anything. It could be the age of marriage. It could be the age of the, having the first child, the age of finishing university, the age of landing your first job that pays you more than 50,000. It could be anything. So always have a title or a description of some sort. You, you need to actually tell us what the visualization is about. I have not done the analysis myself. I always come here as somebody who is fresh to the topic, reasonably fresh, apart from seeing some images come through during the week. So if I don't get it, chances are most people don't get it because I have a data background. So I can infer things and I'm curious and I want to understand, but tell me what it is, especially because the metrics that you have in the data are cut off. The descriptions are cut off on the right side. So I can't even read what they are. Uh, which means you have lost my attention, I'm afraid. Uh, now, that might not upset you, but good practice for analysis to make sure that, you know, whatever you produce, even if it's super basic, like even if you tidy up nothing else, at least tell us what the business is about. Okay, a slope chart um, from Andrew. Let's have a look. Uh, the median age of marriage. So again, note that this from my understanding, it should be the age of women at first marriage rather than the median age of marriage in general. Um, so that is something to make sure or just double check. I could be wrong based on the data you've used, but, uh, but that's what the original visualization was about. Average age of women at first marriage by state versus state population density. So a slope chart is a great way to compare two things. Um, it could be a comparison, you know, in this case, it could also be a comparison between men and women or women and women, well, I guess women and women in a, in a um, same sex marriage would be hard to compare because, you know, which one is on which side. But in these heterosexual relationships, I just want to make sure that, you know, we're being mindful of that in these heterosexual relationships where we have men and women, a slope chart could also compare the age of the men versus the age of the women but not over time then, because we only have two, two bits, two sides. So we're looking at the two timeframes here, which is um, you know, really interesting. And you see that for almost all the lines, they almost all go up. So uh, that's an interesting trend to see. So that seems to confirm this. And I'm guessing there's a line for every state. The median age of marriage is generally higher in states with higher population density. Now, I think that's great. Again, clarify that it is, this is data about women only. Um, in all states, it has increased from 2006 to 2019. Hover over each state to see the increase. Okay, that one I have an issue with because 
while I'm not, so let me just go to the interactive version to show you what I mean. It is going to be difficult to hover over each state because the lines, I mean, I can do it like that, but when you just look at the picture, first, it's hard to see some of the lines because they're quite close together. And secondly, um, I don't know which state is right, which line is which state. And if there are 50 of them, what's the incentive for me hovering over every single one of them? What I would suggest is to call out maybe the top and the bottom or a couple that are really interesting based on the numbers. You know, maybe this one here, Delaware, where there's been, you know, a really steep increase. Um, there might be another one where you've got a steep increase. Something to draw my, my attention and give me, give me a little bit of a, um, a teaser to encourage me to then explore the visualization. If you're just telling me hover over 50 different lines to see some percentages, because it's essentially what I'm going to do, oh, I don't know why. I don't know if I'm that interested to find out something I don't already see. But if you're telling me, did you know that? Something interesting. Then you might encourage me to explore a little bit more. Um, it's just, it seems like a lot of work to ask someone to do. I know, trivial, but hovering with no clear outcome or benefit for your audience. Okay, let's moving right on. Um, I want to just skip down so that we don't just have the most recent ones. I want to make sure I get a bit um, bit of variety there. Oh, hello, Maggie. Um, you see Maggie's tail in the back. Anywho, uh, military spending that was last week. Okay, we've got some... Okay, here is a different, what appreciate feedback. Well, that is fantastic, the data guy. Um, let me open that in Tableau Public because it's a, there's a lot on the image and I want to make sure we can see it in a bit of a bigger version. Median age of women at first marriage. Great title because it tells me specifically what we're looking at. Um, okay, first impression is why the yellow background? I don't think the yellow adds anything except it makes everything a lot more, um, well, it makes the colors look different and it makes it a bit harder to look at. I think any bright background needs to be really justified. If there's a reason white is totally fine. White, black on white is, you know, a really the strongest contrast, black and white is the strongest, strongest contrast you can have. So that makes information and text and stuff much easier to see. So, and also then you have like this kind of peachy color on yellow, which is a bit hard on the eyes. Um, you could just highlight these words by just making them bold in black. So District of Columbia has the highest median marriage age for women at 30.1 years. So I would clarify, having seen that we're looking at different time frames, what in what year is that or, or what time frame are you referring to? Um, but I think that is very interesting. And it would be interesting to know why. You might not be able to tell us, but you know that is something that you're now making me curious about. So I might, might want to research that more. Uh, many of the career ambitions and positions require extensive travel, long work hours. So um, people might be you know, building their career first. So that's a great you know, insight and opinion that you bring into it. <clears throat> so we have the top 10 highest median um, age of women by states. Now, I would say <clears throat> the wording is a little bit clumsy. Maybe say states with, or the top 10 states with the highest median age. You've already told us in the title, it is women at first marriage. So you don't have to necessarily repeat that. Uh, you could also make it a sentence or, or a question. Now, what I would suggest for the right side for both charts is align them because, <clears throat> and then fix the axis because you are talking about age, so it's the same metric in both in both charts, and they go from zero to, I guess, you can probably do it to about age 33 or so, just so you have a bit of um, a bit of room, a bit of a buffer. You want them to both start on the same line. So the top one should be a line to the bottom one so that they have a, a common zero line. And then the axis needs to be fixed because currently the 25.9 line is actually longer than, to, than the 28 years because it starts further to the left and it goes further to the right. So make them zero, make both axes go from zero to 33 and make sure they are aligned if they're, whether they're floating or not, but make sure they are aligned um, so that they start at the same point. And 
I really like that there is quite a bit of text on the left because sometimes you can't explain things with just a few words. And there's no no issue with using more text to help people figure out what you're trying to show them. Okay, well done. And um, then, oh, Marcin has created something very interesting. Let's check it out. Okay, so the median age of women getting married for the first time is rising across the US. I love that title. You can see it's almost two lines, like, like two full lines. And I think that's totally fine. And it gives me all the information I need to understand this is the US, this is women getting married for the first time, and this is their age. Uh, I, I love the, the map. Um, I, I think it's, it's a really cool design. I'm just struggling a little bit with the colors. So the, what would you call this? It's like a dark pink light purple on the dark purple. I mean, it looks good as a design, but it's quite hard to read. So I think I would I would opt for the same pink that you have in the line for these um, state abbreviations. And then on the yellow, you could maybe opt for the dark purple or even for the darkness of the line. But I think just as a design impression, it's really, it's really slick with these um, abbreviated um, state names. Okay, so the description tells us, you know, we're looking at the percentage change between those two periods. Um, this is really, really nicely done. So we have, it includes information about the population density. So we're seeing, so hover over a state. Okay, so you're telling us the population density. Um, but I guess that's not part of the visualization itself. So what I'm seeing with the line is how how it went up. From, from a distance, so if I lean back a little bit, they all look the same, the lines. That would be my one piece of feedback. It's, it's very hard to see any significant difference in them. What might be better is to maybe try <laughs> I dare I say it, try a bar chart so that you can see there's a chunk here and there's another chunk over there. Um, but again, because you are talking, you know, kind of a difference of maybe a year or two years, it's it's going to be a small looking change. So these probably, the lines, yeah, they all, I think what's obvious is they're all going in the same direction. They're all going up. But seeing the difference is a bit hard because they are quite flat, those lines. Um, but other than that, I think this is really well done. Only other comment would be, I think the color choices are good, but it doesn't have to be pink. Um, it doesn't have to involve pink because, you know, pink and blue are a bit overdone. So that would be my only thing to consider. Oh, we have Anne Jackson. Let's let's give Anne some feedback. I don't know if she's going to tune in, but um, uh, how has a state, how has state's median marrying age of women changed relative to other states? Okay, so we have a slope chart and the two different um, time frames. So the colors label whether there's an increase or a decrease in the rank. So, okay, that's interesting. So no change at the top. DC or Washington DC, um, Massachusetts, New York, Rhode Island, Maryland. So all East Coast states. Um, and then also Washington state, interesting, uh, much further down. So there's been a lot of shuffling back and forth. So I think, I think this would make me want to, you know, interact a bit more. I don't know what the display thing is, whether that's my computer or maybe Tableau Public, but the, the labels are a bit squished to the to the numbers. But I think this is really interesting. For me, um, yeah, I, I think this is great. I, I'm just thinking about, you know, the rank thing, but it, it makes sense. So um, I like this. And I like the use of a question in the title. Okay, moving right along. Oh, this is an interesting way as well. Let's check it out. Um, oh, Andy just said that um, Anne and the whole Data School New York team are doing Makeup Monday together every Monday afternoon. 
that is how it should be. Um, and if anyone would like to do that with their team, maybe ask Anne for some suggestion of how to, how to you know, get people on board. I mean, she can just tell them to do it, but you know, maybe she has some suggestions how to implement that in the organization because it's much more fun when you do it together. Median marry age, marriage, get it, play on words, clever. Um, I really like how simple it is to see that they've all moved in the direction towards people being older or women being older when they first get married, but also the difference. I think this is really neat. So Daniel has created this chart, barbell chart. Oh gosh, help me out someone. I'm, I'm losing my vocabulary and I'm, I'm a bit rusty. Um, so basically the red dot is the previous period and then the blue dot is the most current period. So 2015 to 2019. And you can see how, by how much the age has increased. And um, that's, yeah, I think that's really interesting. That's a really neat way of doing it. The only comment I would have here is that red and blue are obviously politically very loaded colors in the US. Um, and because this is about US data, I would, I would suggest to maybe it could be gray and blue, um, just something that doesn't look like it's a political thing. Okay. Um, Okay, this is a last week's data set. I'm just trying to, so we've got the same kind of chart. Um, this, okay, let me go to latest because I think sometimes the sorting doesn't quite help. Okay, so guys, here we go. Um, oh, okay, let's have a look. The change in woman's age at first marriage observation period. Okay, so it sounds a bit sciencey, but it's not a bad thing. Change in years. Okay, I'm trying to just wrap around my wrap my head around what that means. So, this means how many? Basically, from from the previous visualizations, I know every state the age has gone up. So this means this shows me how much has the age gone up. So in North Dakota there has been the smallest change. It's gone up by 0 0.3 years. Okay, so that's confusing because could it not be 0 0.4 years? Like it's because it sits the boxes between the 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. I think that one is a bit confusing, but I guess once I know, I know. Um, so the biggest difference is in Delaware, where it's increased by 2.6 years. And then we've got the US in general, 1.6 years. I think that's an interesting way of doing it. What I would like is, a, so I can get the details for hovering, but I would like a bit more insight on the whole chart that tells me, oh, we've got, well, apart from Wisconsin being kind of by itself at 1.4 years, 1.3 and 1.5 years seem to be like the most popular jumps in age, but I don't know how you would even how you would even kind of argue for that because the difference between you know what's the difference between 1.3 and 1.4 1.5 years like it's literally a matter of weeks slash months. Um, so I would probably just say that most of the states had an increase of well on average it was 1.6 years we know that but between one and two years has been like where most of the states sit. There needs to be just some observation across the chart, I would say. Um, I don't know what that is. Okay, we have a scatter plot. There's a Power BI one, let's check it out. Always curious to see what the other folks are doing. The median age of women at first marriage, so the end should be out there, uh, should be removed in the USA has increased between, yeah, the, the, the title could do a bit of updating, but um, between the timeframes of 2006 to 2010, 26.6 to 28 years old. Um, if a woman lives in a state with a high population density, her age at marriage will probably be higher than that of a woman living in a state with low population density. I would change the high and low population density because it sounds like a very technical term um talk the way write the way you talk i would just say something as simple as 
you know, women who live in a state with, um, well, how would you then say high population density? Um, you know, with, I guess more, more populous states or, you know, with, um, uh, tend to have a higher age or are, tend to be older when they first get married than women in less populated states. So keep things simple. And again, it should be marriage, not marriage. Um, I like that the time frames are labeled. What this makes it hard to do is to see the difference at the state level, because we now probably, I would imagine, have a hundred dots on here, but I can't see which state moved from where to where. So maybe, oh, so that's Rhode Island and that's Rhode Island. These is, you know, I can, I can see the difference, but over here it gets difficult because I don't know which dot is which dot. So that's something I would um, have a bit of a look at. Correlation Spearman. Okay. Okay. Um, we've done the kind of US map thing. Oh, okay. Let's have a look at this next one here. Oh, Kathleen Tyson. Sorry, I missed you. Let me just go up again. I see Divya. I don't see Kathleen Tyson. Okay. Maybe it pops up again. Let's see. Twitter does funny things sometimes. So population decline in only three states. That is the title I see. I don't understand the formatting of the title. That's my first feedback. Um because this makes me think that the, the viz is about three states having a decline in population. This makes me not think about anything to do with marriage because it's a lot smaller than the actual title. Um, and also median age, you can use that, but again, use, use a more common language that people, um, for people to use, uh, for, for people to understand. So, um, there's a lot going on here, but there is no description of the charts. It just says median age, it says population density, median age difference. I want a description of how to read this chart, these charts and this dashboard, please. Okay. Granularity seven, ten. Okay. I don't I don't think I saw that. Sorry, Kathleen. I don't I don't know if there's a Okay, well, let's see if we can find Kathleen on our way. Alcohol consumption, that's definitely not this week. We've done that type of chart, that chart. Here we go. Um, okay. Let me open this in a new tab. That helps a little bit. Um, change in population density and age of women's first marriage are not highly correlated. I like that. I don't know. I haven't tested it, but I like that there's a you know declarative statement there. Um, first impression in terms of visual is I would reduce. I would probably cut it off at twelve percent, and at the bottom you probably don't need to go below zero. It just it's a lot of white space, and the vis itself, the actual data points and the labels are quite small. Even you know if I make it large in the image, uh, sorry on on the screen. So I would optimize the space a little bit. Now it says for those periods, comparing the percentage change in median age of first marriage for women to percentage. Okay. Um, I think for people, for academics, this is probably pretty straightforward to understand. I think for your everyday lay person who is probably going to be the ones looking at this on Twitter, um, that's quite a lot to comprehend in a single sentence. Again, keep it simple. Um, you, if it means you need another two sentences to explain it, that's totally fine. But I would say, how would you explain this to your friends at a barbecue? How would you explain it to your parents or, you know, a, a high school child or even a primary school child? Um, keep the language nice and simple so that it's more accessible. Because for me, this is like, this is almost too hard already. And I'm somebody who gets it. I just prefer, and I'm like, oh yeah, I can just read through this and it makes sense and it unfolds step after step. Um, I like that the, every state has a label so I can find them. Now, what I, what I struggle with a little bit is 
I think we're good with percentage for population density, um, but it's probably easier to understand as a fraction. So for example, I think California had something like 250 people per square mile or something like that. I think that's a bit easier to comprehend. And I know this is about the change, but that is a lot for, that's for a lot for me to take in because I'm trying to think of the age, which I would think is in year, population density is people per square mile. Then there's a percentage change and that is between two periods of four years each or five years each. So that's a lot of mental computation I have to do to understand what this is, because basically what it's telling me is the further I go to the right, the more there is a change in population between those two periods. So um, it looks like more people are in Utah in, in the second period than there were in the prior period. That's how I understand it. And then going up, we have the percentage change median age of first marriage. So people are, the further up they are, the more, or the, the older they are when they first get married, 2015 to 2019 compared to 2006 and 2010. And that's that's a bit too much for me to do in my head. Um, so I would say, can you make this a bit simpler? You could even build it out. You could say, hey, I'm going to compare population density and just the actual age. And then you could move progressively towards the change so people can follow along. Um, okay. Oh, I'm looking at the time because I have a bit of a deadline. I have another meeting. But um, it's it's great to see people's comments. And I hope that going through these different uh, visualizations has been helpful. I love seeing different maps. I think it's cool when people experiment. And I really recommend that people check out Andy's Watch Me This on Mondays because you can just get some inspiration, but also what it really helps you with is understanding the data. So you have to, you do have, well, we still want to encourage you to do analysis and to figure things out by yourself to train that muscle in your brain. But seeing somebody else talk through it can give you a bit of a, a head start or just a, oh, okay, I get what this is about. And then you can use that to speed up your own process or maybe explore more questions because you have to spend less time upfront understanding the data. Um, I do want to call out Tomas's this. I think it's really cool. I haven't explored it in detail whether I understand it, but just the first impression of the visual is great. And I also saw, and I need to see if I can find it, oh, Richard Spiegel. Oh, he's done something cool. Nice. Um, I also want to see if I can come across Marion's this. Um, Marion has great eye for design. Oh, here we go. Um, Again, I haven't explored it, but I love the visual of, you know, the colors, the bars, there's some really nice annotations going on. So it's a good one for some nice inspiration as well. Okay, uh, that's it for me this week. We are going to be back next week. Should be at the same time. Oh, no, I need to, ch I need to check. No, it should be at the same time because I will be back. I'm going to be in Berlin next week, Monday to Wednesday, but I should be back on time for our Viz Review session. So yeah, but you'll find them on Andy's YouTube. You'll find them on the Make of a Monday website. And of course he will announce that ahead of time as well. Good luck for the rest of the week for work, visualizations, Tableau stuff, data analysis stuff. I hope you have a good time and I will speak to you all next week. Take care, bye-bye.